how to build highly effective software teams. Take effing action, put it together, and subscribe to Tom Penn's channel on YouTube now. <laughs> yeah, I like it, it's crazy. I have been in the software business for maybe around 30 years now. I started when I was young, right? Uh, if you watch my videos, you know that I really started when I was in my late teens. I started writing software, I started publishing software to uh, the various software publishing houses. I was selling my software for cheap and they were probably making millions from my software. Uh, later on, when I'm in university, and after that, I started my own software companies. I was selling, uh, you know, custom software development solutions for, you know, half a million, million dollars, you know, um, uh, in my 20s, 30s. So I, I, I was doing quite well for myself. Uh, I think I know a few things about software. I've worked with software uh, teams, you know, of different sizes, from two people. Well, in fact, even from one person like myself to, you know, 200 people, right? So I've worked with software teams, uh, you know, of different sizes and across different geographies. I've worked with software teams in Canada, in Vietnam. We have worked with teams that are, you know, um, across different regions. So I think I know a few things about building software, right? And, you know, I have a lot of success in software, actually. Um, the reason why I'm in Vietnam is because my uh, former company sent me here to build a software center and by the time I left that company there were about 60 engineers in that company uh, and uh, we were building uh, some very very powerful uh, data security software for that company. Um, today uh, my company has over 200 employees uh, most of it, you know, building software for some of the very large corporations on our planet. And uh, also we're building e-commerce in Vietnam. So, yes, I like to think I know a lot about software. And I want to talk to you today about software teams, how to build very highly effective ones. And um, I want to tell you something about software process. Because, you see, for me, uh, two things are very important. You gotta have the right people. That's number one. You have the wrong people, it doesn't matter what process you run, it's gonna be a total disaster, right? And you gotta have the right process, right? Once you have the right people, you put in the right process, they're willing to follow the process, you're gonna get very, very high performance. Uh, I would say uh, there are many software processes, you know, there's Waterfall, there's Scrum, there's Lean, there's I can go on and on. Uh, but the one that I have the most success with is something called Agile Scrum. Uh, and anybody in software would tell you that they either know or they hate Agile Scrum, right? And uh, the world is moving in that direction for very good reasons because it, it is a process that delivers results, right? And my first experience with Scrum was back in 2011. And I built my first uh, Scrum team uh, and we were able to deliver software very, very, very quickly. Uh, so, uh, and then, uh, you know, the whole company adopts that process. Uh, and then when I came to Vietnam, we continued to use that process. We built very successful teams here in Vietnam using Agile Scrum. I would say the only time uh, Agile Scrum failed for me was, you know, back in 2016, 2017, when I started my own e-commerce company and uh, I hired a team of developers to help me build e-commerce uh, marketplace. And, you know, I hired an idiot, you know, a product owner, and he was fighting the process, he was disagreeing with the process, he doesn't want to do Scrum, he was influencing other people not to do Scrum, and of course, when you have people that are fighting the process, it's gonna be total shit show, right? And it was. And, uh, you know, my mistake was not to fire that product owner fast enough. I'll explain what product owners are soon. You see, the process works only if you have the right people. If you have the wrong people, like in the case where I hired a complete idiot product owner, then yes, it will not work. You hire the right people, and Scrum is a very powerful process that you can implement uh, it's more than a process. Scrum is really a way of thinking. And if you implement that in your software teams, you can get super high performance. 
So I can probably give you know a three day boot camp on Agile Scrum because you really do need a bit of time to understand uh, the process. But you know we don't have three days here, so I'm gonna try to only talk about one thing, one thing only that I feel is really, really important in Scrum. I want to convey that to you so that you understand what I think is the most important element in Scrum and why Scrum is such a powerful process and it can make software development teams so successful when they implement it. So Scrum is good, right? So I want to give you some basics first. In Scrum, there are three important roles. There are only three important roles. You have somebody called Scrum Master, you got somebody called the Product Owner, and you got the team. So the team is engineers, testers, the people that do the actual technical work to build the software, right? The Scrum Master is like a project manager, but not a project manager, right? The Scrum Master is somebody that enforces the process, that enforces the scrum rules. There are many scrum rules, we will not talk about them today. And uh, so scrum master is somebody that makes sure scrum happens. Because without somebody looking at the process, people sometimes don't do what the process requires them to do. So the scrum master makes sure it happens. And uh, the product owner is somebody that has a vision of the product. He, he knows what he wants to build for the product, he knows what the business problems are, and he talks to the stakeholders, he talks to different departments, he talks to customers, find out what people want, and then he put them into requirements. Requirements that the developers you know, and the testers understand so that they can build the product. So clear, right? Scrum Master is somebody who enforces the rules. Uh, product Owner is somebody who has a vision of what the product looks like in the future, and write requirements so that the uh, uh, engineers and testers can build the product. And of course, you have the actual doers, the people that actually build the product and uh, test it, right? So there are three different roles in uh, Scrum, and there are only three roles, not, not more, okay, in Scrum. Now, what I want to talk about is the mentality of engineers and uh, how that is incompatible with business. All right, and how Scrum solves that problem. Because you see, most developers, and whether you agree with me or not, uh, most developers like stability, right? Uh, they like to live their life with some sense of predictability, right? They want to know, oh, today I'm gonna do this, tomorrow I'm gonna do that, it's gonna rain, I'm gonna bring my umbrella to work. They want predictability. Most developers, testers, engineers, they think like that. But in the business world, things are constantly change. You have competition, you have competitors, you have you know, partners that change their API, you have, everything is changing around you and it's unpredictable, right? Our competition just released a feature that's gonna kill us. Or you know, our vendor just changed their API, we need to change it now, otherwise our software will stop working. Or you know, um, there are so many scenarios that require the business to change all the time. Or maybe a customer that comes out of the blue and says, I will pay you a million dollars if you build this feature. Will you not take it? Will you not take it? And of course, you say, yeah, I'll take it. And then you talk to the engineering team and say, hey, we're gonna change our plans. We're gonna build this feature because we're gonna get a million dollars, right? So uh, things always change in business. But remember, developers, engineers, testers, they like predictability like they like stability, and business is not stable. Business is always changing, forever changing. It's always changing every day. And the people that don't like change cannot be in business, right? They would be perfect for being an accountant, being uh, an engineer, uh, you know, operational people, right? But they cannot be business people. They cannot be in business development. They cannot be CEOs. They cannot be, you know, uh, an entrepreneur, because when you run a business, every day there's change, constant change. So Scrum offers a solution to this problem, and in Scrum, we have something called sprints. So every sprint is definable. It could be two, two weeks. In our case, it's two weeks, right? Every sprint is two weeks. In every two weeks, the engineers agree what they can do in those two weeks, and they commit to it, and they work on it, and Ideally, nothing changes in that week. So the worst thing that the 
developers, engineers, testers want to hear is, hey guys, you know, there's a new business opportunity, we're going to change your plan. Sorry, just throw away your code and we're going to start a new code. You know, that, that is like uh, the worst nightmare for any engineer, right? So remember, they like predictability, right? So, but business always change and that happens a lot. So how does Scrum solve this problem? Well, Scrum solves this problem by introducing the product owner. The product owner writes requirements and it requires the product owner to think forward, right? The product owner must think not like what we need to build now, but the product owner needs to think what we're gonna build two weeks from now, four weeks from now, one month from now, one quarter from now, one year from now. The best product owners that I know, they're always very forward thinking. They're always thinking about what they wanna do one year from now. They always have a product roadmap that extends two years. They already know what they wanna do two years later, right? Uh, but it doesn't mean that the plan doesn't change because business always changes, but they're constantly changing their plan, right? They're constantly changing their two-year plan. But a great product owner always makes sure that the development team gets clear requirements in the current sprint and maybe the next sprint. And, you know, they try to minimize disruptions to the engineering team because they also understand that engineers don't like disruptions, right? They don't like unpredictability. So product owners always write requirements for features that the team need to build in the future, right? So by doing that, the team always have clear requirements that they know what to work on in the current current sprint or right now they know exactly what they have to build and those uh, you know requirements don't change too much we try to minimize disruptions but change can happen change always happen we have to be a business we cannot you know uh, be a business that doesn't change right so if there's a change that's required and of course we require the whole team to change but the smart product owners know that you know, they want to think ahead so that they don't impact the engineering team, the development team, so that they always work on things that are stable and predictable. Once they go into a sprint, the two weeks, you know, they know exactly what they have to do and rarely ever the work in that two weeks ever change, right? That's how Scrum solves the problem of engineers love stability and business must change. And you can read more about that on the internet. There's a lot of YouTube videos about that. But I think that is the, really the key point in Scrum that makes Scrum so successful for software teams. That's why Scrum can help your software teams be so successful because when the engineering team is always changing what they're building right now, you're introducing a lot of waste, right? So for example, Developer write the code to build this feature and the product owner says, no, 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 I, I changed my mind. I want to I wanna do this instead. So they have to throw away the code and start again. And that's very wasteful. And that's basically burning money away. By the product owner thinking more into the future and you know, uh, always giving the engineers solid requirements for the current sprint, what they need to do now, right? And ensuring that there's minimal change in what they have to do now, then you guarantee that the engineers are productive. Everything they built will not be wasted. So if you want to have a very highly performant software team, look into Scrum and also make sure that the people that are writing the requirements are writing requirements ahead of the engineering team. When the engineering team works on something today, the requirements should be very, very solid, requires no or little change. And the product owners should always look much further ahead and you know, preparing requirements maybe one, one month from now. So later on when the team, one month from now, they're working on requirements that are already solid, right? I hope that's clear. Basically, product owners work ahead, right? They write requirements for future work that the team will do. And that way, the requirements that the engineering team get now is very solid. The worst case is that the product owner is writing the requirements as the development team is doing the work. Because when you do that, uh, you know, th there's going to be a lot of questions from the engineering team. They're like, what are we supposed to build? And then, and then the product people are like, I don't know, right? And they blame the boss and, you know, shit, shit happens, right? So, you know, that is the worst case to happen in any engineering team. 
and uh, you want to avoid that. You always want your product people to look much further ahead and you want your engineering team to always get clear requirements, right? And if, you're, if your requirements are not clear, if, they, if, the, if the, your developer and tester, you know, they read the requirement and it's like, I don't understand what the product people want then that's another problem. You need to fix that because when that happens, you're gonna have a lot of churn. In the best case, you know, they will waste a lot of time talking to the product owner, trying to figure out what the product owner wants. In the worst case is that, you know, the engineer built something that the business doesn't need and they have to throw it away and do it again. And that is very, very, very expensive. So look into Scrum and make sure that engineers always get, you know, clear requirements, uh, on what they have to do now and the uh, product owners are looking forward. I couldn't say that enough times because it's so important. Take fucking action and don't be a fucktard.